All right. Um, we have one more talk left for today. Um, we have uh, Damien, and uh, he will talk about uh, uh, edge routers. And so, um, uh, yeah, uh, take it away. Hey, welcome. So I officially can talk until midnight. After that, they kick us out. So we have plenty of time. Uh, I'm going to drink beer at 6 o'clock. <laughs> So, welcome, I'm Damien. This is where you can find me on the internet. Don't worry, you will have the link to the presentation at the end of the slides, and you will have it in the website later, so don't worry about that. Um, I'm developer advocate for containers, that's my main mission. So my goal is to sell my crap and say, hey, my tool is a good tool. Sometimes it's the best, sometimes not. That's my daily job. So just in case you want to use it, that's all too. We don't care right now. So what is Content House? That's the company behind traffic. We'll cover traffic after that. So that's a 20 people company, uh, initially based on in Lyon in France. There are people on other places and it's a remote based company. I live in Belgium. We have person in the US, in Poland. So uh, our goal is to deliver traffic and sell support around traffic and now the enterprise version. So that talk is about a tool named Traffic, which is a reverse proxy edge, edge router software. So I learned recently always starting why, why that tool can solve your problem or why, why should you avoid that tool. So we have a bit of history, evolution of software design, that's a classical history introduction. But we know that it starts with monoliths and we start to do microservices and back to monolith or uh, ALF, microservices, nano services, I don't... And why do we do that? Because the premise was having everyone happy, not having issues, and etc. But we know what happened in real life. You start with a nice idea and everything broke in. Um, reference this morning keynotes and all your own experiences with that. One of the main issues when you go on microservice-oriented architecture, but in general, when you have a lot of services to address on your platform, it's to find where is the service. So when a request onto the platform, how and where to go, based on which role. That's one of the main issues. With the recent, let's say, seven, 18 years, the, the recent decades brought a lot of tools that helped us for managing that, from container platform, from libraries that you can integrate for service discovery, from service system, pass, whatever. A lot of tools already try to solve that issue with success, depending on the context. But the persons that did traffic did it for one main reason. In, uh, have you seen that one? It's YAML. That's better with a, rule, with a ruler to write YAML so you don't have any issue. I personally don't have any f anything against YAML, or that's just a cool joke. The thing is that for all these tools, you have to write configuration files, tons of configuration files, or rely on you know something magica convention. And that's why traffic come. The goal was to have dynamically an auto-configured system where the configuration footprint is the most smaller part that you will want to have. And then, yeah, you're lazy, basically. So you want traffic to deal with whatever stuff you don't want to deal with that could be automated. So you focus only on the footprint of important things. That's the reason why we built traffic, which is a software edge router or reverse proxy. Traffic is an open source project. It's written in Golang for having, you know, kind of Intermediate, it's low level enough, not being really low level, but not, you know, there is no GVM or everything. So you can find it on GitHub. Um, it's quite popular. We have a lot of contributors. If you're interested, contribu contributing is not about only writing code, it's about opening issue, describing use case, helping us with the documentation. So do not hesitate. If you have anything with that product, raise your voice because it's a community based product. And this is your product, not only ours. So first of all, the basic concept, so you can understand what is Magica and what is not. So absolutely no Magica, just 
software. So let's start simple, because this is a marketing diagram, right? So better to go on a simple example. I have one application deployed on Docker, I have traffic, and I have my user on the blue part. So the user wants to reach my application. How is it possible? So it's a simple case to understand what is happening. Step one, you need to configure traffic at least to watch a provider. The provider is somewhere a platform that provides services. In that case, it's Docker. It could be Docker Swarm, it could be Kubernetes, Mesos, Marathon, Azure Service Fabric, uh, ECS, and we have a lot of providers. Or it could be a file describing your backend server, worst case. So traffic, watch for the backend provider. The second thing you have to configure is obviously the entry points. You have to define at least one time, I want that domain name on that port, and I want HTTPS enabled on that with certificates. You have to tell traffic it cannot guess. However, by watching the provider, traffic is able to watch for any backend services. So it can guess what are the private IP or the way to contact the backend server and create what we call backends internally inside traffic. You have a list of backends that correspond to applications. So you have incoming requests, you have a way of out doing outgoing requests to your private servers and application. How do you mix them together with front end? And this is where the value resides. You can configure manually traffic like you do with Nginx or with HAProxy or any of the other awesome tools that do the same thing. Traffic is aimed to make that part as simple as possible for you. So maybe your use case is not this. Traffic is only for simple management, for not having to care. So the front ends are the way to express how do we route the oncoming request to the backend system? What are the rules? Is it based on the host name, on the path? Should we do a rewrite? Um, should we check the, the headers, the, the query string, or whatever value? So this is routing, basic routing at HTTP level. But the thing is that this information are not provided by the person in charge of traffic. They are provided by the o part of the organization in charge of deploying the application. In the case of Docker, for example, we use labels. So your developer deploy a new version of the application, and you have a separation of concerns because the developer express the fact that they want their application reached through that host name or that path or a few probabilities. So the routing rules are living next to the application. And traffic, on the other way, just have to be up and watch for that and update itself. So you deploy a new application on Docker, traffic watch the events, detect the labels, and update the routing configuration and reload itself. If it fails, it go back to the previously known configuration. That's how traffic works. So you have your requests, your request under the rules that the administrator configured traffic. This is the manual port, because it's the minimum requirement. Then based on auto-detection on your backends, it can guess how to do the routing. You can do that by hand if you want, but the whole point is not having to do this. And finally, you have the backend system. So that's how traffic works. So enough concept, a bit of code. I don't have enough time to do a full demo, but you have online video and you can guess and come ask questions if you want to see this in real life. So it's a simple example using Docker Compose. Yeah, I told you we want to avoid YAML, so here is some YAML. Yeah. <laughs> do what I say, <laughs> but don't do what I do. So here it's the declaration of a Docker Compose service, which is our entry point for the platform. So you have to pass it a few flags, or you can use a TOML configuration file. It's a language like YAML, etc. So in that case, I prefer configuration, personally, uh, by flags. So here, we tell it that it had to watch to Docker. That's why we bind them on the sockets. This is not a production use case, of course. In production, you don't bind them on the Docker socket for obvious reasons. You have to provide it through whatever secured system to traffic but you have to provide it. And also, uh, 
just not the ACME, the two ACME flags. These uh, flags enable automatic certificate request and renewal with Let's Encrypt, with two flags. So that's why we provide the default domain. So in that setup, each time an application will come with a host name, it will request a certificate and re take care of renewing it, or send you an email if it fails for doing that two weeks before the, the hand. So with that, I don't have to care anymore about my HTTPS. You could use your own certificates, but again, it's about being simple and lazy. So we start that system that starts to watch the Docker. For the person here, I don't think the public here um, will have issues, but just in case, Let's Encrypt is a way to author free certificates. So you request a certificate and then it challenges you to prove that you are the person able to manage the domain or the web server behind. So this exchange based on challenge, you, have, you can find free in the ACME protocol. Traffic wars works with each of one. It could be DNS, so you need to provide credential to contact your DNS system to add the record, get the certificate, and clean up the record at the end. The easier one is TLS. We support free based on your use case. So then we start a web server. So let's start simple. That first one, when a request on my HTTPS mycompany.org enter the platform, I want that request to be uh, redirected to the backend name web server on the 80 port. So in that case, I put a simple example, Nginx. That's a very cool web server that by default listens on its 80 port here. And we provide a label. The person in charge of the configuration of that backend system just write the label saying, I expect to be contacted on mycompany.org. And the HTTPS is because of Let's Encrypt. Simple case. You start that service and automatically you can start having your request forwarded to the backend. And you can scale it, it will be load balanced. You can obviously do context-based routing. So same domain name, but if you go on slash Jenkins, I want the request to go to the Jenkins server, which is configured to listen on its localhost 8080 on the slash Jenkins path. So that's a simple case. We don't have to do any rewrite, it's just path-based routing. Obviously, the previous one will still work. It will be Jenkins the more specific, or we go to the web server. You can even define a default backend if required. Traffic is smart, but not smart enough to guess the port. In the case of Jenkins, the container exposed two ports. We have to tell which one to use for incoming HTTP requests, because we are operating at HTTP layer, right? So that's why we need to explain it with a label, or traffic will choose randomly. You can obviously do rewrites. That one is the most common. You want to remove the pass. So when if you go to mycompany.org slash git server, you want the slash git server to be removed while rewriting on the go the address by sending that to the backends. So instead of pass prefix, you have pass prefix strip. And then if really those two use cases does not fit your needs, we have a regex support so you can do, in fact, whatever you want. But these are the more most common use cases. Finally, to support WebSocket out of the box. You don't have any directive to put. It's just, this is an example of web terminal. TTID is a command line on your web terminal, so generally a container. It's easy if you want to do a workshop and you don't want to deal with Windows. You just provide something that works out of the box on any n normal uh, web browser. And so it uses WebSocket for async and bidirectional communication. You just start your web application. In that case, I just want a um, rewrite of the path. You start it and it works out of the box. No need to provide any configuration of whatever timeout. You have a same default, it's simple again. So if you want more details, you will have a video that show you this in action and give you the links to the documentation. So if you want to check after that. I've shown with a basic development local setup, you are not a person dealing with development environment. You work in real life production. Traffic works on Metal on Docker with Docker Swarm, and in that case with Kubernetes. So it acts as a, an official ingress. So ingress controller is the implementation that will take care of parsing the ingress rules that your developers submit when deploying in Kubernetes. 
that explain how to route from outside to the inside. Traffic works exactly and is, is officially supported. How do you do? You take your normal ingress, and instead of using the ingress class Nginx, you switch to traffic or whatever label you describe when you installed it initially on your Kubernetes cluster. And then all the ingress and annotation system work exactly the same. So just to show you that we don't only target a single Docker Compose local stack, it works with Swarm and everyone. So yeah, I don't have a lot of time, so there is a lot of things you can do. Metric exposition with Prometheus Datadog, you have a lot of uh, tracing, you, are, you can play on the load balancing, on the way of routing, there is a lot of advanced feature, but yeah, you know, 25 minutes. Finally, so traffic um, is an open source product, and since developers need to it, we have our own products based on traffic. So first of all, herd. Um, for the person who went at the configuration management comp years ago, there were that guy from Chef that did that totally crazy, uh, like the first 10 minutes were pictures of goats. I mean, it was like, have you lost your mind or what? This talk triggered me, triggered something for me. So the summary is be the goat which will eat the grass between the silos. This is a cultural definition of DevOps from the chef persons. Uh, I recommend you that talk and the podcast. They are quite funny and yeah, they're really good. So that's why I want to use the goat analogy. And so like the herd of goats, traffic now comes in herds. And so this is a distributed version of traffic. The goal is simple. Traffic is a product which handles the credentials of your API. Do you want requests coming from the outside world being forwarded inside the same container that have access to your DNS API service or worse, your Kubernetes API or Docker Swarm API? You don't. So we split concern by creating a control plane and data plane. That's the world idea initially, and this provides capability to distribute. So the first thing, high availability, the, the idea is quite, is quite, is quite good. It's, it's to say, hey, I have one node going down, so I want that node uh, to be replaced in a few times. I mean, Kubernetes will restart it, scale it, I don't care, but you don't want to lose your request or at least diminish the, the footprint of that loss. So that's why we built a distributed version. But as soon as you start distributing, how to manage security and safety, or to be sure that at any moment the configuration is the same on two different nodes if you have a network partition. That's why security and safety are the primary concern of having a control plane which watch the API and provide its own raft-based availability. But that one is not handling forwarding requests. It only watch and maintain configuration and push that configuration to the data plane. The data plane is just stateless open source traffic that just forward requests and only that. As they are stateless and completely dumb, you can scale them as much as you want. That's the idea. So if you build something like that, you have scalability. If you have stateless nodes that forward traffic, if you have any pick, if you use any HPA, for example, in Kubernetes, that's scale horizontally the number of pods on your cluster based on metric and thresholds, or any system like that that exists in years, you can have something that adapts itself to the traffic and can even scale down to zero if you don't want to pay your cloud provider when no traffic. And so you have high availability and possibility to handle less or more loads with those stateless nodes. That's the goal of the enterprise edition. So right now, we wanted this as simple as traffic, but you know, simple distributed system sounds like marketing bullshit rights. So we are trying our best to give almost the same user experience. It won't be as easy, but the goal is to say one line installation that can handle Docker Swarm or Metal installation or Kubernetes, that's always the same thing except the dash dash Kubernetes flag and the credential that you need. And once it, it's installed and deployed with your own properties, the deploy configuration is the same as we did. We just copy and pass from open source and you don't have anything else to do. That's what we are trying to achieve with that product. 
making distributed problem uh, complicated. So if you want to try it for free, feel free to go there. Uh, ask for a license that will be valid for one month and a half. Break it. And if you break it or are not happy with that, please let us know. It's currently an early access or beta program because we want to see if this solves correctly the problem we think it should. But we cannot guess. You are users. So if you are curious or this ring a bell for you, don't hesitate to try it. If you feel that this should be open source, don't hesitate. We need feedbacks because it starts from a community effort and we just want to have one feature on closed source. Stay tuned, more things are coming during the year on that. So that's, that's almost all for me. Uh, if you want only one sticker, sorry, you had to, to listen for my craft for 20 minutes while we have stickers on the other side of the wall on the entrance. If you want to see a fun demo, we have Traffic Enterprise Edition on a Kubernetes Raspberry Pi cluster. You can do pull requests by changing the Lego uh, tiny figures if you want. And if you just want to see a nice demo with blinking LEDs and just see how load balancing works on a Kubernetes cluster and not care about traffic, you can also come. It's also fun. And by the way, we'll try to break the product to see how it behaves in the case of Raspberry Pis. So it includes Kubernetes issues also. But this could be interesting. We are hiring. If you, if you, want, if you search for a job, run that container and I let you try the next steps. Auto quizzes. So thank you. I think we have five minutes or more for questions. Uh, you can find me on the internet. You can find the presentation here with a nice QR code and everything. So that's all for me. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Do you have any question or remarks or feedback? So the question is, uh, isn't it hard to understand and observe all traffic routes because you have a lot of deployment and changes all the time, so the debug mode, isn't it complicated? So the debug mode provides enough logs, so you can get that from the logs of traffic in that case, but traffic is also compliant with Zipkin and Jagger if you want to do tracing, because these tools are instrumented enough to provide you a better view because traffic might not be able to see all the elements of your network or provide a stack. So you can just enable the tracing and with the tracing system you can see which request goes where combined to the log. Um, we are currently playing with Loki, the, the new stuff uh, with Grafana, so you can correlate metrics tracing in a few months and logs with that. So that's uh, one example of instrumentation. There are plenty and I'm sure you know more about, about that than me. So that's one way to overcome complexity. We never met someone giving us the feedback uh, on, on that. So either people just throw everything away and go silently, or they are happy, or they are ashamed to ask us, I don't know. But we don't have any feedback on that specific topic. So do you provide some kind of hashing algorithm, like if you want to split for, yeah, for caching? So I don't think so with the current version. Um, it's uh, round robin or sticky based. So you could do some routing based on, um, uh, on a path or part of the cookie or the others, but we don't have hashing algorithm for the load balancing itself. Uh, this might be interesting with the, the version two because all the core and the concept I showed you have changed for the new version, which is currently in work on the master branch. So there will be plenty cases for implementing such algorithm that are real life cases. So we don't today. No question. Okay, I made you sleep. <laughs> Perfect. So then enjoy your beer, your conference, and thank you for your attention.
Take care. Yeah, thank you.